Okay, time to uh, get trusses up and I'm gonna prefab a whole section here and I'll go over my process with how I do that to uh, make it easy and controllable and accurate. So here we go. All right, first order of business is to get all of your trusses organized. Um, in this case, we've put a couple two by 10 beams in place and stacked all of the trusses in order that will be going up here. And then we've set up a couple over here to get the gable end prepared. What I like to do is get my gable end sheeted and I put that on top of the truss that will go directly behind it. And I can do all my layout for my ladder um, in place here and make sure all my layout is perfect. I can get my rafter tail all dialed in. I can get my fascia lengths. Everything is all prepped and ready to go. So now we'll start spacing it all out and putting it together. up here a few things that I do as well make sure my outlook is you know at least 20 inches up from the end so I get lots of cantilever on this first board so that is measured off of the little on my previous truss to match that a couple two inch pan spikes toe nailed in down here get these locked in place here right now. okay then my ladder pieces are laid out so the butt in here and my gable will be set by that And then my blocks, I cut these at 45 degrees on the bottom. I've got my layout at the bottom side of the next outlook, so I'll put that on my line to get that perfect. A couple in there, and with that 45, I get cross ventilation for my soffit, and it's easy to nail. trusses into two girders is we have set the girder over there to dimension and this one we've actually left about a quarter to three eighths out that way so that we can easily get these in set all the trusses at that end with the hanger nails and then once this is all set we'll come back and knock the girder over to make these all tight otherwise we'll be fighting these to get them in between and now it's easy blocks mathematically to be 22 and a half we always cut them 22 and 7 16 even a little bit less than that so they butt into gang nails uh, they don't grow the cuts aren't perfect so cut them short worst case scenario you put this together you got a bit of room like, like this bit of slop you just space them out easier to knock things apart and have a knock blocks out because they're too long the easy way
I love 10, 12. Nine is easier to walk. You don't slide. 11, you can't, so you just gotta use toe boards. 10, toe boards can be avoided, but you also step, so it's like the worst of both. Careful stepping. Okay, so framing these knockdowns here, put in a flat valley hip, and then the knockdowns are set up so that they're an inch and a half low, so they match up with the trusses above. So those just go in like this. Okay, about to start sheeting this plane, a few things that we've done beforehand is we have straightened this gable, make sure our fascia is deadly. We've also sighted and straightened this fascia. And then what we do is we measure up from the top edge of this fascia board, the width of our sheet, and we snap a line across the top. I'm now gonna set a helper nail, a couple of those at the bottom to hold my sheet. This is a 10-12 pitch, so it gets a little bit tricky. So I'm just gonna set a two and a quarter, roughly where the bottom edge of that sheet's gonna be. I'll do one for either side to make this a bit easier on myself. So that I can then rest the sheet there, dial it in on my lines and tag it on layout. Okay, so now I can just tag this on my snapped line and then I will also lay out my trusses make sure that they're on the correct layout so things stay straight and then I'll get this row done and because it's a steeper pitch I'm gonna nail it before I do my next course. Okay another nice little trick once I've got the top tacked I want to get nailed down there in order to get there I'm gonna hook my foot in the sheet put it down here and now I can get right out here and have no issue to reach make sure this is flush and good Get right down to this end. Over well, here, I'll pull my help, helper nail. Just finishing off putting in uh, valley sets over this roof so I'll talk you through a few things that I've uh, done here to make this nice and easy. For starters I always sheet the plane before I put my valley set on. A lot of guys put them right on top of the trusses and that's how the trusses are typically designed as far as their geometry and math but then you have to block all the intersections you have nowhere to walk so I find sheeting it first and then making an adjustment to their layout is the best safest fastest strongest way to do it. So I've sheeted these planes first um, majorly crucial detail, follow the layout from your truss company. The trusses have to go where they lay them out to be or all this stuff doesn't work. If you lay it out properly as per their drawing and you do the math correctly, putting these things together is just a joy. If you make some mistakes or take some liberties, you will be fighting it and building all your own because it's a mess. So in order to get these two sides taken care of, we have uh, regular trusses on either end. We have a um, whole section of trusses through the center that are scissor trusses 
there's girders on both ends, scissor trusses between, so then I sheeted on top of that, and now we've set all of our valley trusses in between on top, on layout. So, because everything is square, and our sheets are perfectly on layout, I pulled the trusses to layout, snapping the valley lines was quite straightforward. There's a variety of ways to do that, which I can get into another time, but for the sake of this video, just assume that I've got valley lines that are deadly. I've also snapped center lines that represent the center of my peak. And then I've marked center lines on my valley trusses. So the bottom is going to be centered. And then what I do is I've got my valley lines set and I've got a center line. I can then take the bottom cord length of one of my valley trusses and divide that in half. And wherever that length matches between my center line and my valley line, that sets the height where that truss goes. Once I've got that established, I'll actually snap a line across my roof that represents the bottom cord of my valley truss, and I'll set a couple helper nails. So I'm gonna do that now. I've got the line snapped here, and the length of this line, where it intersects my two valley lines, is the same length as my top valley truss. So what I'm gonna do now is set a couple helper nails to make this easy. The lines I've snapped are the side of the truss that is actually touching sheathing. So I'm gonna set a couple of helper nails but roughly, I'm gonna eyeball an inch and a half below that. And just set those there. And there. And as soon as you have your first valley truss set, so there's an odd space because of the sheathing on here. For the first one, I've got that leveled and set. After that first valley truss is set, they are two feet and over. They will mathematically be correct. So I've laid these all out once the first one was set. So I can use a regular ridge block, 22 and a half. 7 16ths. If you've uh, seen some of my other posts about that, leave these a little bit short. It's cheap insurance. That's set. Now I'm going to grab that last truss. I could find my helper nail. Run that along there. This roof is 10 12, if you're interested. It's just barely walkable, which makes it uh, properly annoying because your feet are on fire and you slip sometimes. So I'm on both my helper nails now. And what I'm going to do now, I've got a, a center line on this truss. I'll line that up with my center line I snapped here. And then I can actually sight down the top cord. So my top cord line right down there. And at the bottom of that, you can see how it intersects the chalk line perfectly. So now that's close. I can nail my ridge block because there'll still be some movement, movement if I need it. I can confirm that both ends look good. I'm sighting down. I'm on my center line. I'm going to just bump it up to perfect. And I'm going to shoot two toenails down into every truss now. I pull that right up to my line and make it perfect. And that is done. I've just now got to confirm level on these two, space it a little bit and put a ridge block in here to tie this together. And now, yeah, if you go back that way there, Josh, and take a sight right down the peak of the whole roof. And you shouldn't be able to tell where my piggybacks are, where my valley trusses are versus the regular trusses. And that's how it can turn out if you follow the instructions, do the math properly, keep things square and level. It's very satisfying. So uh, the setup I'm wearing, uh, this is my favorite rig for roof framing. And I am in a Sela ExoFit harness and the bags I'm running, LT bag, one outer bag, tape, nail puller, rafter square, stick nails. I got three inch and two inch, my phone pocket clip in the back. My dominant side is a very standard R1 HB. So it's a hammer in the back, metal hammer loop, no divided interior. This is just full of H clips. I got my chalk line in the outer bag, uh, my pencil here and knife. So super simple, it's light, has all the capacity I need and I can even fit my two and a quarter inch coils in the primary bag on my left. All right, so the fastest way I've found to do valley cuts to my sheathing is establish what my difference is over a four foot sheet from my short point to my long point. Once you establish that one time on a job, typically you can use that same number for all of your diagonal sheets if your pitches are equal everywhere. So for instance, on my first row of sheeting, 
I can snap a line across my trusses that represents the bottom and the top of a row of sheathing and mark where those terminate on a valley line. And then what I can do, just to show you here, over a four foot sheet, I've got a valley line in here already and I've got a square edge. So I'm gonna find out what the linear distance is, the difference from here across to where that point is up there. So right here, I'm gonna just measure back from this edge of the sheet to where this hip line comes, this valley line comes through right there. And I have got three and three eighths. I'm gonna make the same mark up here, three and three eighths. And now I'm gonna measure right across to where that valley line intersects the edge of the sheet right here. And I've got 36 and five eighths. 36 and five eighths is my difference in my top and bottom length, bottom length of my sheet for all four foot sheets on 10, 12 pitches. Now we can use that number to cut all of our valley and hip cuts.